Greetings everyone. My name is Celia Brown and I'm coming to you from New York in the United States. My workshop today is called Accelerated Peer Support for the Pre-Summit of Global Youth Mental Wellness in Ghana, West Africa. To tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a person with lived experience, I'm a peer specialist, I'm a peer supporter, I'm a human rights activist, and I've been a part of the consumer survivor expatient movement in the United States for over 20 years, focusing on human rights and mental health. Peer support saved my life. Its roots are in the peer self-help movement, and one of the two uh, values is self-determination and self-definition, which means is that you make your own decisions uh, to empower you in your own life. Um, I came to be a peer specialist back in uh, 1989 from a hospital in the Bronx. It was a research project funded by the National Institute of Mental Health. And it was to test if ex-patients um, could work as members of the intensive case management team that was also new at that time. So I was the first peer specialist in New York State. I worked alongside intensive case managers, um, other peer specialists and paraprofessionals who were non-peers. I want to give you a definition of what peer support is. Peer support is the process of giving and receiving encouragement and assistance to achieve long-term recovery. Peer support supporters offer emotional support, share knowledge, teach skills, provide practical assistance, and connect with people with resources, opportunities, community supports, and other people. And this definition is about by Sherry Mead and Phyllis Solomon, who are researchers. In behavioral health, peers offer their unique lived experience with mental health conditions to provide peer support focused on advocacy, education, mo mentoring, and motivation. So peer support is a way to validate your experience. It's done by two peers. Um, you can share your story. It's not about uh, solving a person's um, problem. It's, it's about really listening and understanding what that person is going through. This has nothing to do with clinical services. People should continue to do that uh, of their choice. But peer support is really a way that you don't feel so isolated, that you meet with people that have might have gone through the same thing you've gone through, um, that you can share your, your strengths and your hopes with people, uh, and that you don't feel so alone. So, the, I just want to mention, give you a, a, just a little bit of, uh, of the history. As I mentioned before, here, uh, this is a research project in, in New York, in the Bronx. Um, the outcomes, the outcomes was to show that peers can work, they can be employed full time, uh, they can share their expertise as people who have been through the mental health system using their experiences to support people. The project ended in, in, in 1994, and from there, um, what was created was the Peer Special Civil Service title, which I was instrumental in helping to develop with the Office of Mental Health and the, and the Office of Mental Health Personnel's Office. 
This is a very new title and the only qualification is that you had to be you had to be someone who is a, a peer, a person with psychiatric uh, uh, diagnosis, someone, a person with psychiatric history, um, and that that was your qualification. This is, has never been heard of in the United States. So on February 2nd, 1994, I went to speak to the Civil Service Commission, which all civil service titles are approved. And so peer specialists would work with nurses, they would work with case managers, they would work with psychologists and psychiatrists and social workers and mental health therapy aides. It was approved, but the uh, actual position wasn't uh, in operation until December of 1998, where peer specialists worked in outpatient services where they ran groups such as the Wellness uh, Recovery Action Plan, groups on mental health, and people that have substance use issues, a variety of groups based on the needs of that particular outpatient clinic. I should mention that we have been a leader here in New York on training, peer specialist training. I want to mention my ancestor, Howie the Harp. He was a part of the Consumer Survivor Movement. He was instrumental in creating the Peer Specialist Training Center in Manhattan, in Harlem, New York. Uh, he died in February 1995, but he built a legacy. He, bought, he built a legacy of supports and training for peers to last a lifetime. So his training focused on mental health, substance use, and at the time, uh, one time in Howie the Harp's life, he was homeless. So he wanted to include homeless services all together. So the center is renamed Howie the Harp Peer Advocacy Training Center. The director of that program is Lene Brown, an African-American woman. I do some of the training there on the evolution of peer specialists for new peers coming in that want to be trained as peer specialists. So I uh, train them on the history and the evolution of peer specialists. I want to kind of do a role play with you for a minute. I know this is very different than actually in person doing, doing a workshop. So I want, and I'm speaking directly to youth around the world. So I want you to think about peer support and what that means to you. And I want you to think about who would you go to for support if, for anxiety, for depression, um, and if you just need someone to talk to. So one of the things I want you to think about is think about who your circle of friends are. Um, it could be a family member, it could be a cousin, your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad. Uh, it could be a coworker or a colleague. And let's take a minute for you to, uh, to do that. Write a list of people in your circle that support, that give you peer support. Okay, I advise you to always keep that list with you, it either it's in a notebook or it's on your, your cell phone, because when you are not feeling upset, you can always go back or depressed and need support. You can always go back to the list of the circle of peer support, of people that support you. And you can call them, you can text them, um, so it's important that um, you have that list. One second. Okay. So peer, peer support is for, actually it's for everyone. It's for youth, it's for adults. As I said earlier, it saved my life. 
you know what's what also is good about it is that you it you can um, provide information and resources to peers that really may not have heard of peer specialist training or may not have heard of a peer support group or a program that a mental health program or a peer run organization that you can attend. So it's good in the community to provide this kind of support to lessen discrimination and stigma around mental health. So you can give resources and information about peer support to your neighbors, to your family, to people in your school, to other youth. I want to switch uh, and talk about uh, sharing tools of peer support to achieve emotional wellness for the better, betterment of um, our lives. One thing that I think is really important that, that I am currently developing is peer mentoring and mentee programs. And so it's designed to support youth on their emotional well-being and wellness, social wellness, and being successful in navigating the complexities of your life. So peer mentor means someone who maybe has uh, achieved a certain amount of experience in their life that they want to share with another peer to sort of help them get through uh, a situation. It could be employment, that they have expertise. What was it like for you to be employed? What was it like for you to go through wellness? What was it like for you to get through the mental health hospital back in successfully into the community and these are just ideas what was it like for you when um, you you were feeling depressed and needed you know what what kind of tools or what kind of actions did you take um, so one of the things now, and I just want to say that during my time of like 30, 30 years ago, I've been doing peer support for that long. We didn't have uh, social media as we do today. So my connection was actually on um, talking to people on a conference call, which we are already kind of do that now or I would see you in person at a location where I would meet with other peers to do, uh, to get support. Now we have social media. So we have Google Meet, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have Snapchat, and we have uh, WhatsApp. These tools you can use to do peer support. So you, I'll talk a little bit about WhatsApp because I know a lot of you may not have uh, computers or tablets, but you might have a phone that you can use WhatsApp. WhatsApp is very good for communication and communicating with your friends and your family and your loved ones. So you can create um, a video chat with at least four people to talk about peer support, to share your knowledge, share your experience, your strength and your hopes with your peers who may also be youth. Um, and don't worry about um, that you don't have all the information because you don't know how you're feeling. You do know who you are and what you're feeling. Nobody can ever take that experience away from you. And you can share your story not so much for you to get a solution, but for you to, to, to be able to, um, other people to listen to your story and get inspiration and strength. I'm gonna read something to you that is one, from one of our ancestors, Judy Chamberlain. She's no longer with, her, with us, but she wrote an article called The Ex-Patient Movement, Where We Are, where we've been and where we're going. So I'm gonna read a quote from that article. It's, self-help is a concept, 
not a single program model. The concept is a means by which people become empowered and begin to think of themselves as, a, as competent individuals as they present themselves in new ways to the world. You see, there's more to you than you know. It's more to you, that's what we call hope. It's more than what you know about yourself. There's more to you. And when you meet together with other youth for peer support, you'll discover so many new ways of who you are that you never discovered. Just by having that, that uh, environment where you can truly be who you are, not having all the answers, and that you can be with people who are like-minded and just want to learn. Peer support is about validation to validating someone's experience and listening to it. It's being around people you can trust so you can share your story, which is very, very important. So I think that peer support is important. And I want to say that what saddens me is a lot of youth today are attempting suicide or completing suicide. There's a new resource um, called Safe Talk. It's suicide awareness training. And anyone in the community can get this training. And it's important that in, before you wouldn't talk about suicide, but now we're encouraging people to talk about suicide, see the signs of suicide, and then that peer or mental health uh, advocate can say, okay, well, let me get you some resources that you might need to make you feel better because we don't want you to commit suicide. And maybe 30 or 40% of people do not want to kill themselves, but they want someone to reach out to them and see the signs and see how they're feeling or why they want to end their lives. So I want you to know that that's a, a, a resource called Safe Talk. It's, about, it's from an organization called Living Works, which is an international. So please think about that. And I wanna say that you can do anything in your life. You might be at a place where you're um, one level of, of recovery, but you can always climb to reach your highest potential. And you might have some setbacks, that that's okay. You can always get up and, and, and achieve your goals. You are the change that we all want to see in this world. So never forget that. And remember, I'm always here. Uh, if you need, need me to support you, to talk about peer support or to give resources. So I just want to say thank you and good luck.